day everybody we um we're going to do these question and answer set we get so many questions all the time most of the time we can answer them on an email um and some texts we get i don't really have much to do with that side of things but you know we sit down in an evening reunite and we go through things and, and she'll always send you back an answer sometimes you can't answer because unless you can put your hand on the horse or actually physically be there and see the horse it's very difficult but we've had three people we've got uh daniel Ricky from cornwall i hope i pronounced that right it's r double e k i e um and then we've got amelia fairchild she's california i think certainly out in the states and then erica robinson they're all a bit related regarding pairs and hello to everybody in the states um we've not been out there for a while we're just so busy you know we come out and do clinics we was down in florida Pennsylvania, all over the place um when we was in canada last year anyway getting down to this so they're talking about this, all these three questions are interrelated so as i go through it we should be able to answer each one so how do you you know what you look for when you've got your single and you want to find another one to go with it to make it to a pair. Well, there's a few things. We had some horses in that were top competition ponies. Um, and there was Harry. Um, there was three of them. can't remember their names now. But we've put a little bit of film up to show you. Now, to get them to work nicely together, it's better, obviously, to start off with, rather than con try and control them, you know to what you want to get their paces more or less right so there's a few simple measurements you can do um that i find these are only things that work for me please don't think i'm a great authority um and other people will have different ideas and i don't think that anybody's particularly wrong it's just the way we do it here so if someone asks this look i want to buy this pony um what we will do is put a line through the center of the knee to the hoof sitting on the ground and then we'll measure that and if you measure that with the horse next to it is a good thing then from that line go up to the elbow and measure that what i've found you can have two ponies horses exactly the same height but can vary vastly in the length of the cannon bone well obviously their stride's going to be a little bit different the other thing to talk about is the other way we we do once we once we've established those measurements yeah um and obviously the general structure of the horse you know you want them to be two cobs you want a pair to look like a pair um and you want them to drive like one horse I mean, that's the ideal so the, the next thing to think about is and it's very easy to do if you've got a sand school anywhere and you can get your horses there both of them or if one you're thinking of buying is up this end of the country or somewhere and they've got a sand school you can then do the same thing there are other ways of doing it but the best way is in sand so what i do is get the horse calm and quiet and sensible you don't want the horse calling for its mates in the in the barn or stable you don't want that you want it to be calm quiet and sensible so give it a good long walk around like that make a bit of fuss with it let it be happy with you then rake the ground for around 25, 30 feet and walk your horse to leave the footprints at the walk. Yeah. Then you can measure them. So you're going to measure from the front of the hoof, you know, near side, off side. And you can do the hind as well, the same. That will give you an idea of stride. Now, the problem is with that and is the fitness of the horse, obviously, when they've you know, horses has been working for a while, they get a lot fitter and their stride improves even at the walk. But you'll get a decent idea. And the difference between two horses that, let's just say two ponies, 13 two, or any size, can be drastically different. I mean, it would surprise you how much difference there would be. Whether the horse is shod or not, even to the way the horse is shod. But as a basic rule, measure up from the ground to the middle of the knee, from the knee to the elbow. If they're more or less the same size, on a small pony with an inch and on a big horse within two, you should be all right as far as that goes. Bear in mind, you might have a pony that's overweight, 
been laid out of grass, that's the one you're thinking of buying, therefore you've got to look okay. You're going to find this, like anybody, you get a little bit fitter, your stride changes. So you can take that into account. Your sand laid out, rake it nice, yeah, so you can definitely see your footprints going through, the hoof prints going through. I think that's a very, very important thing to get them two things established. Then you've got a good chance. Next thing is temperament. You've got to think, I mean, like, um, I think Erica Robinson mentioned, and it seems silly, but it's not silly. A very, very good, uh, you know, when she made her inquiry, would a metronome help? Well, of course it would, wouldn't it? But you can do that now on a phone, on a, on a you know, accounting thing on a phone, on these modern uh, mobile phone things. They have all of that. But you can see, and then you can put it up against another one. So as you walk, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as it strides, yeah? Lovely, you can keep a check by taking a little film on your phone and then run it back with the clock, yeah, if you can get them both together. If you can't get them together, you can do your measurements and your walk, horses in two different places. Um, also, the other thing is you want to take into account how they get on, and this is a big thing. Um, for me, look, we've just done two... JB and Dan, and there was Harry before that, um, some competition ponies. Now, the terrible shame was, I mean, it was seriously such a shame. There was two that were perfect together, but one was a bully. And that's a very, very hard thing to stop. So it would kick, go to kick the other one when it was alongside it. Not all the time. But when he got a little bit excited with the job he was doing, he would get a little bit, oh, come on, let's get on. Although he was perfectly behaved with film to prove it, he would just, you know, go to kick the other horse. So we had to change that pony to get another one. Now, had we, could we have brought them together before? Possibly. We would have brought them together before. We could have introduced them to each other, yeah? And let them find a level, yeah? And then you can see... How they are. A lot of what I have learnt over the years, which is a very old thing to pass over to you, and I'd gladly tell you anything. I don't have any secrets in the way I train or any gadgets or anything like that in particular. Um, and I don't sell the stuff, you know, you know, buy this and you'll also be wonderful. Um, but if you if you can get them together, but not in, so if you've got one in a stall or stable, whichever, you know, wherever you are, um, and you can just let them sniff each other, smell each other, um, and you'll find if you do that gradual, they'll become good mates. Every horse has got a different temperament. That's the next thing. You want roughly the same temperament. So by doing some very simple things when you're on the sand, seeing as you're there and you're working out the length of stride, right, which you're going to do at the walk and the trot, yeah? Once you've got them measurements and they're roughly the same, that'll help you a lot. Next thing you want to do while you're on the sand is put down some, you've all seen, no doubt, our arena um, and the stuff we have in there, but a simple plastic bag or piece of sacking or tarpaulin, just see how both horses react to it, yeah? If you've never had them together before, they don't know each other and neither horse drives, we break plenty of horses into pairs um, that have never seen each other before. But we do break more where people have had a horse broken and then they send the next one along when they find it. Or, you know, they might see one horse that we've broken, see if, you know, we don't get involved with selling horses, but. They, they might well phone that owner up and say, that's just like mine, you know, would you sell it? Or, you know. So they're the basic rules. Just, just go over that one more time. So from the ground up to a line in the middle of the knee. Yeah? So you can see the big flat knee cap. Just put a line through the middle there. You know, imaginary line, measure that, and then up to the elbow. Yeah? Um, and you've got them two measurements. So you've got the forearm, if you like, then, and the upper arm that you're going to measure. And because you're measuring to the elbow, you can find that easily in the middle of the knees, easy enough to find. Then do the stride. But there's no point in trying to do the stride if the horse is upset, dancing about, or whatever. So it's best to walk it around for a while, 
take this time because it could t save you a great deal of time later on so that's that then we're talking going back to what i was saying about temperament this is a dodgy thing to do if you get one that doesn't work so harry was a lovely perfectly matched ponies i mean seriously beautifully matched went beautiful when they were going together you couldn't beat them i mean they were seriously top of the tree um, and they would have done fantastic but harry would kick occasionally now you could obviously i would tell him off you know and i'd say to him you know the famous words i use that everybody seems to think you do and i would say that to him you know and he'd know i'm talking to him and he'd stop but that's very dodgy and when you're going into competitions some horses are get excited and act a little bit different to others um anyway we got another one another pony to match who was dano and he was absolutely mint perfect took a long time to get him right he had a couple of problems with his teeth that we had to do and the, the lady that owned him was an excellent driver um a very good driver um but among the best i've seen you know she was on the circuit before with a tandem but um so she had these so we got them together and we done exactly that when it, it, they both came here together the new one arrived here and we put them together gradually together until they was all right until they feed out the same bucket lovely when you can get them to do that then they're going to be fine they accept one another on the same level which is quite rare you know i don't know what film we've got of that but if we've got a bit we'll show you but that's what we've done now they went on and done you know um well you know they, they work very very well together as a pair absolutely super you could drive them in every traffic around the arena you know cones anything at all and they would excel you know absolutely superb so that's that the um so as far as i go daniel that's what i would do then we've got you know i think we've got uh uh erica saying about the metronome that's not daft that you know it's the thing i've never thought of particularly but it would be because if you've got that going don't 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 and you put it to and you can see the horse keeping in time and you walk the other one over the same piece of ground that's a lot of common sense in that you know that's not so silly and obviously now the next thing is it used to be years ago um not that i've ever dealt in horses really but it used to be years ago you'd have horse on trial you know and i think that's always a good thing to do because you're better off paying out the insurance to have the horse there on your premises or get the, the the insurance company notified that it's going to change stables or yards or barns as they say in america um and you have it there and do what i've said introduce them one inside the stable one out especially if you've got bars up the front just see who's who get them used to each other get them eating out the same bucket you know just stand with them holding the bucket if they'll do that that's good um and you get them to be friends be mates be equals there will never be two horses that are equal there is always something but the the one that is um holds the authority doesn't he feels no need to use it if there's never a challenge from the other one do you see what i mean so they can be perfectly happy together so that's as much as i can tell you really i think all the things to look out for we we'll go over that one more time so we've got measuring so we know the leg length is the same on the cannon and it was next thing we're going to do is walk it across the sand and trot it across the sand but there's no point in doing it if, if it's dancing about on the end of a, a a shank or lead rope because it's not walking you walk nice and sensibly and if you've got the other one and you can do the same thing then you can measure that and make sure that's right normally if that's right you're three quarters of the way there the next thing is this temperament thing now that is it would be far oh, what i would do I would say to someone who owned a pony i would say let me bring mine please can we put yours in the stable mine outside leave them for a couple of hours one tied up outside one in the stable yeah and just see how they get on over the door now and then if you can actually hold a bowl of food that they'll both eat out of you're home and dry you know that's most of your things now it doesn't mean to say that when they work together they're going to be brilliant because that's a whole different thing we will
do another film on that and getting them to work together the way to do it um, but you must remember this I've been doing this for a long long time a long long time now 60 years so a lot of what I know um, perhaps I don't realize I know it's only now since we've started making these films a few years ago that people ask you questions and you know but this is only my opinion my opinion doesn't make it right um, but we do do a lot of miles a week behind horses I think we average say certainly in the summertime pushing 300 mile a week you know when you've got 10 in for training um, if they all do 10 miles or they all do five or some are doing five some doing it some are doing more then obviously the miles add up over the week so there's a lot that you get up the other thing is we're going to talk about in another film try and talk about is body language because often if you can study that and there are books on it there are lots of talks on it and like that what you have to do um, is certain things say the same thing from every horse but you've got to remember they're individuals you know they are individuals and so much so and one circumstance will upset this horse it won't upset this one at all but if you get them to go as a pair they are absolutely the loveliest thing in the world to do and i've had a lot of horses that i've owned that i've put in teams and pairs there's one film on youtube where i drive a hearse with me funeral horses um and that's definitely uh worth, worth looking at not i'm not being conceited but they go around a major road you know a dual carriageway and their feet all of them are in perfect timing as they go perfect time so their feet hit the ground exactly the same time you know like that um and that's how i train them you know get them used to each other first you know find out learn watch see watch what they do the way their head moves their ears their eyes every little thing about them the way they just move their body swish their tail there's so much to learn there and you can get from that but if you get two going as a pair then there's you know that's heaven sent absolutely marvelous and thank you for your questions all three of you two of you from america fairchild and robinson and uh danielle from down in cornwall in england so i hope that helps thank you